on lockdown, ice cream. Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill being the neighborhood that CHOP was was in, and this is not far from CHOP, so you can imagine how this is all going. As far as the whole shoplifting thing, it's just in an area where you got a lot of stuff going on, and this is one of those grocery stores where by stuff going on, I mean a lot of crime and management is doing, they're doing inventory, and they are like, okay, we've had 48 batches of whatever ice cream Ben and Jerry stolen this month. Okay. So you get enough of those numbers, and corporate is going to go, lock down the damn ice cream. We're bleeding out in the ice cream aisle. That's what happens. And if that goes on for long enough, guess what? The store is going to close down. The store is going to close down if it doesn't make enough money. Those are basic economics. But the two authors that I'm going to read from today, I don't think really conceptualize what it takes to run a business and stay in business. Let's check it out. Before we do, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies. And I read the news for reasonable people. All right, let's do this. On lockdown, ice cream. And the people are pissed their ice cream is being locked out. And I get that. It's a hot day. You're running into QFC. I hate going into grocery stores. It takes so long. Give me a solid 7-Eleven. Ice cream isn't locked down in 7-Eleven. Go there. Now, nah, it's more money, right? And it's like, if you look at the nutritional content of 7-Eleven, horrible horrible. Everything is a super carb and anything with protein in it is wildly expensive. So you got to go into the grocery store. You go into the grocery store on a hot summer day, you're looking for a little dessert and you're like, good Lord, I have to get like a person and QFC. QFC by my house and that's owned by Kroger out of Cincinnati, um, big corporate chain. QFC used to be local and it was great. It has become terrible, terrible. QFC, what are you doing? At my grocery store, there is never enough checkers at QFC. And that's why I've gone to going to other grocery stores because there's never enough uh, checkout people. If I have a big, huge cart, I don't want to do self-checkout. All right, yeah, I'll scan my 85 items by myself. I'll do your job. No, I'm going to push my cart up and I'm going to roll a bunch of stuff out on the cart and I'm going to have somebody else scan it and do all that weighing things. Like if you get a vegetable and you don't really know what you're doing at, at the self-checkout, I mean, that's a disaster, especially for a dude. You're like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm not going to go grocery shopping anymore. I'm just going to order online. So that's kind of what goes through my head, probably not many other people's heads, but that's where we sit. So on lockdown, we've got ice cream, ice cream and IL-7, lockdown. You're going to need to get some help to get that out of there. At the Harvard Avenue QFC the other day, all the ice cream display cases, as well as the packaged seafood sections, they were locked. Well, people are stealing enough stuff where management notices and they say, all right, here's our plan for loss prevention. Let's lock it up. That's how this goes. Pretty basic stuff, folks. The store is chronically understaffed, as all QFCs are, because they're trying to squeeze a profit out of these stores. And this is that, that's just what they've gone to. So there was no one to unlock them. According to the store manager, I could leave without the items, but not without questioning him. It was on orders from corporate which declared that the items were too easy to shoplift. Apparently, when pilferage on particular items reaches a certain level, they just lock those things up. Yeah, that's how this works. And this is an indication of how much pilfering is going on. We've done stories here on this podcast about uh, CVS and all kinds of Target, Walmart shutting down stores because they're not profitable because too many people are stealing stuff from said stores. So that's just how this goes. But it's really interesting to see pe different people's take. And by interesting, I mean ridiculous to see how people's different take is, well, we should still be able to get our ice cream. Well, not if you're in an area where, you know, it's just being stolen left and right and the store is bleeding out because that store isn't going to stay open long term if that keeps up. It's just not, it's not viable. It's not profitable. Of course, this inconveniences those customers without petty th larceny on their minds. Yes, it does. And let's point out, the elderly get drilled by this, and they get drilled 
by when their store is shut down because oftentimes they can't drive, they're walking, or people that are handicapped can't drive, they're walking, they need to go get their groceries. Their grocery store shuts down because they're in a tough part of town and that store shuts down because of, you know, bleeding out money. That sucks. But that is just kind of where we're headed. And that's what QFC in, in Capitol Hill here in Seattle is saying. And we're talking about, um, without petty larceny, uh, petty larceny on their, petty larceny on their minds. But that's apparently not as important to corporate. So th they're talking about corporate making decisions based on the bottom line. Well, that is unfortunately what running a business is 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 all about. You have to make a profit, otherwise you don't stay in business. So do you want the ice cream locked down or do you want the entire shore store shut down? Take your pick. Which one do you want to go with? A or B? You can't have both. So there you go. Granted, Capitol Hill isn't 12th and Jackson. Now that is one of the hot spots where the uh, Operation New Day focused along with Third and Pike and Pine, which uh, the article literally goes on to say, or even Third and Pike. Those are the two hot spots that Seattle police have been going after where all the crime is going on. So Capitol Hill isn't that, but it doesn't matter. If you're in a location where stuff is just being stolen left and right, and that is happening in Capitol Hill, then you're going to have to suffer the consequences. This is what's going on. So maybe you encourage your fellow shoppers slash shoplifters not to take stuff. And if you see them taking stuff, report them. That's never going to happen because you got people walking out with stuff all day long to the point where corporate says, lock up the Ben and Jerry's. So, but if you're going to operate a supermarket there, you have to find a way to both protect and serve. Well, protecting and serving, um, yeah, those are important, but you got to stay profitable too. Like you got to make enough money to stay, to keep the doors open. So this is a measure that at this point in time does that. And they're going to wait and see what the results are. And if it makes sense, they're going to keep moving. And if things keep going south, eventually the store is going to get shut down, right? Better cameras and someone to monitor them. All right, how much money you just got through telling me that you don't have enough personnel on the floor. And that's because staff is expensive, especially in Seattle, where you've got this hazard pay because your ridiculous city council dictates these ridiculous labor laws that are causing businesses to shut down like the other QFCs, which did during the beginning of the pandemic, when that ridiculous stuff happened. Yeah, yeah, this business, this store wasn't all that profitable because you guys were stealing all the stuff. Now you're going to make us do hazard pay? Don't think so. Shutting the store down. That's, that's what business does, unfortunately. Hate to tell you. So as far as better cameras and somewhere, someone to monitor them, I don't think so. We're past that. We've already established a oh, shit ton of ice cream is being stolen and seafood, frozen seafood, apparently. Um, which is very expensive. So you're got small items, very expensive. And as I understand it, it's only the real gourmet ice cream, the good stuff, right? The good stuff. Nobody wants to steal that crappy stuff. I don't even know what that is. Uh, generic. I don't know. I think generic ice cream is pretty good. A way to approach the shoplifters that doesn't lead to violence. Nobody should or would be ready to get shot over a pint of rum raisin or a piece of salmon. Well, uh, yeah, but that's not the point. The deal is if enough people steal, yeah, you get it. Such as a quiet wood, would you like to pay for that fish you just stuffed in your pants, sir? Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Or requiring calling the police. They're, they're questioning or requiring calling. The police aren't going to do anything. They're not coming out on a shoplifting call. They We don't have enough police because the knuckleheads in Seattle defunded the police and they're on the whole defund the police. And this is what you get. You get your ice cream locked away. There you go. In a world where I've even stopped making rude gestures to the driver who cuts ahead of me because there's a chance that he'll shoot me, it may be futile to hope that corporate can invest in hiring and training security de-escalators to implement policies like this. They're not going to do that. It's not cost effective. Plus, it's not their responsibility. It's the responsibility of people not to steal, but they're doing that. So corporate's going to do something and they're going to do something like, well, let's lock up the ice cream. Makes absolute sense to me. What doesn't make sense to me is that people are, are wondering, well, why can't, why can't corporate do something else? Well, they are. They're locking up your ice cream. So, 
or even produce a video that could train employees in conflict resolution. You don't want to have your employees going after people stealing stuff. That's not how this works. You just need to contain your product, which is what they're doing, and then analyze the results. And if it isn't good enough over time, you shut that store down. I hope that they could try something before they start locking away the chocolate. That's literally what this article says. Okay, I get it. You don't want to have stuff. You don't want you want to be able to go to the grocery store and have a have an easy experience. But what if that grocery store wasn't there? How much harder would it be if you had to go to the next available grocery store a couple of miles away? Yeah, you get where I'm coming from here. All right, let's go to QFC is now locking down ice cream. This was a big topic. This is this is this is from um, Capitol Hill, Seattle. This this is a development here. Never mind the guy who's jabbing himself in the neck and taking a whiz on the sidewalk while simultaneously watching the car that he set on fire in a public intersection, not far from this location here, not in Capitol Hill, but in the Central District. Never mind, you know, that kind of stuff going on. I mean, we got to be concerned about ice cream. So we got QFC is now locking down ice cream on Capitol Hill. More security, including access control gates coming. Because you've got windows being bashed out, you got people stealing stuff, you got people breaking into stores all over. This is what's going on. Okay, so and this is in this is in some of the more urban neighborhoods in Seattle. This isn't all over. Although two days ago, I think it was today is a Friday. Happy Friday. Um, if it's your Friday. And um, I was in 7 Eleven, my beloved 7 Eleven by my home. It's about a mile away. And the um, the guy at the counter, who I know pretty well, he is literally not even five feet tall. He's but he's stocky. I mean, he's not a guy you'd want to mess with in the dark alley. So um, I was talking with him, and all of a sudden he looks over my shoulder, and I could tell he wasn't looking at me. And he then he looks at me and he goes like this, and I'm motioning to move out of the way. So I stepped aside about a foot, and he's looking at some crackhead over my shoulder who's in the store, um, maybe trying to steal stuff. Now, in their defense, they were on something. I don't know if it was math. I think it was math, crack, whatever. Um, they did pay for their bottle of wine and something else. They did pay, but they did look like somebody that, you know, could take stuff. So this is happening all over. And so these stores are having to do drastic things and locking up, you know, I've had people send me stuff from, um, from San Francisco. That's nothing. We got to lock up our laundry detergent here. We got to lock up these hair products in certain neighborhoods. They're just being stolen left and right. It's like, oh, let's just take something. Because they know, even if they get caught, police probably not going to arrest them. And if they get arrested, they're probably not going to face any charges because crime is so rampant in these neighborhoods that, and here in Seattle, police are defunded. So that whole, well, let's call the police and have them sorted out. Doesn't happen anymore. Doesn't happen anymore. So who takes the hit? The store owners. And corporate, all they do is go through a checklist. All right, we got a crap ton of ice cream that's being stolen. Next. And that's what they do. So while one company competing for the neighborhood's grocery stores is enjoying its Capitol Hill honeymoon on Broadway, I bet that's a short-lived honeymoon. Oh, God, I see what people are talking about now. Stealing stuff left and right. A chain with a longer-running connection here is experiencing a few bumps in the relationship. In the latest move alienating customers here, QFC is suddenly putting its most sought-after merchandise behind lock and key. With new security systems and the Broadway market store freezers, frozen goods, including ice cream and sweets, now require employee to access much like the lockdown liquor aisles at area groceries. It has not been a popular development with customers, and it's only the latest in the company's not very customer-friendly approach to the neighborhood. Well, I would say that the shoplifters don't have a very friendly approach to this store. That would be my counterpoint. And when that happens, I don't need to tell you again. After things started going really south in 2021, when Kroger shut down one of the neighborhood's three QFCs in a tiff with the city council over COVID hazard pay, it wasn't a tiff. Those story, those stores were already bleeding out. And when you added uh, paying employees a bunch more money due to COVID hazard pay, 
um, those stores weren't viable. So corporate said, mm, yep, close them. And they did. That's what happens. So QFC also acted to restrict access to its Capitol Hill stores with shuttered entrances along the Harvard Avenue side of the buildings. So you've got stores hunkering down. You got people breaking in. You got safety concerns. You can't hire enough uh, grocery store workers because your profitability isn't there. So on the thin, thin margins in a grocery store, I mean, it's crazy. They got to sell a lot of stuff. And if a lot of that stuff is walking out, the store without being charged for. I mean, this is basic business, folks. This is not hard to comprehend. But local representatives from Ohio-based QFC parent Kroger have not yet responded to Capitol Hill whatever about how the need to lock down 5 to $7 frozen treats came about. Well, you knucklehead, people were stealing it. That's what happened. So here's somebody's tweet on this. Thought about getting some ice cream at the North Broadway QFC, but it's locked. I can't imagine the mental gymnastics required to justify setting this up. Losses from theft can't possibly cost more than the lost sales from the friction of using this system. Well, no, that is not true. We're saying these losses mean we need to take action. This is from management. This is the action they took, and they are willing to take the friction because this is about profit and loss. It's not about keeping people happy from, from the standpoint of, all right, yeah, you know, we're just going to, just going to let people keep stealing ice cream. I mean, you know, we want our customers to be happy. They're not paying customers, but you know, they come in and just steal our ice cream, but we're okay with that. I mean, you know, we're a publicly traded stock and we don't really have to, you know, our shareholders aren't really that important to us. So bleeding out money, it's not a big thing. We need to make sure that everybody's, you know, taken care of and happy. So if you need some ice cream, come in into the Harvard or come into the Capitol Hill QFC and steal some ice cream. And we're good with that because at the next company shareholder meeting, I'm sure they'll understand that, um, well, you know, we would have had a profitable month, but those 14 stores, they bled out so hard because of the ice cream and frozen seafood that, yeah, you had a big loss and now your stock is going down and your investment is worth less. But hey, we got non-paying customers stealing ice cream. They loved it. They thought it was great. Yeah, you see see where I'm going with this. I mean, this is just not that hard of a, of a topic to come up with. But for two authors here in Seattle, it apparently is it's people people want um they want business to serve them on their terms and unfortunately that's not how this works and unfortunately that attitude has spread across all walks of life and people are like well i need you to pay me more even though i'm not doing that great of a job and this job probably isn't worth all that much more. It's probably worth less, but you know, we got kind of a labor shortage. And so I, I need you to pay me more. It's like, okay, yeah, no, no. I need to be able to buy this because this makes my life better, but I can't afford it. So I'm just going to take it. What are the, what are the ramifications of that? Well, here you go. Crazy stuff, right? And I know in other cities, this seems like child's play. Child's play. Downtown Seattle, you got people stealing seven hundred dollar big screen TVs. That's hardcore. You've got this happening. Um, you've got these dash and grabs. You've got stores, the upper end stores that have big profit margins. They can afford to hire those one or two armed security guards, but that is super expensive to do. So. You got to deal with what's out there in front of you. And if you've got a corporate grocery store and they're not making money, you, you got to figure that one out and you got to analyze, all right, do I want to live in an area where this is going on and accept this as my daily struggle? That's your choice as well. All right. That's it for me on this one. I think I've beaten the ice cream behind locked doors enough. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now. 